Hi friend, welcome to another Tech Lab Online. I'm Mr. Crowley, and today our question is, how can we take our best airplane and make it even better? Stay tuned, let's check it out. Awesome, I'm so glad you're here. This is the second part in our airplane series. So if you're tuning in for the first time, check the links below for our first episode on how to make your best airplane. Before we can improve our airplane, we first need to understand the forces that affect it. No, not that kind of force, although it would be helpful if you crash land on Dagobah. We need to understand the forces acting on our airplane, and thankfully, science can help us do just that. In science, a force is either a push or a pull acting on an object, in this case, our airplane. To discover one of the forces that will impact your airplane, we can hold our plane out, like so, and then, drop the plane, and our plane mostly falls straight down. That force is called gravity, and gravity is the force that pulls all things, us, the plane, towards the center of the Earth, or, if you're in outer space, towards another object with mass. The person who discovered gravity was Sir Isaac Newton, a really brilliant scientist who lived a long time ago. He also defined three laws of motion. These laws of motion help us make sense of the world around us. His first law states that an object in motion will stay in motion, and an object at rest will stay at rest, unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. What that means is if I look at our plane laying here, it's gonna remain there until an unbalanced force or an outside force comes and acts on that plane in a way that is unbalanced. That also means that our plane will fly through the air forever if there is no other force acting on it. Which means if you were to throw this in outer space, you might get some serious distance on your toss. That brings us to Newton's second law. His second law states that when an object has an unbalanced force acting on it, it will accelerate in the direction of that unbalanced force. So with our airplane, if our airplane is at rest in my hands, not moving anywhere, it won't move until an unbalanced force, like me throwing the airplane, acts on it. And when I throw that airplane, it will continue flying in the direction I threw it. It won't go backwards, it'll continue along that path. Which brings us finally to the third law that Newton has for his laws of motion. His third law states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. My favorite way to think of this is that if I am in Storm Runner and I'm strapped in, ready to go, as soon as that roller coaster launches off, I'm pushed back into my seat. That's an equal and opposite reaction. The roller coaster moves forward and I move backward in an equal and opposite force. With our plane, there's an equal and opposite force. As I'm throwing the plane, the plane is also pushing against me. However, because the plane is so much lighter and I, unfortunately, am so much heavier, that means that the plane's push doesn't impact me nearly as much as my unbalanced force pushing it in a forward direction. All right, so now that we have an idea of all the forces that are impacting and affecting our plane, let's think about how they work together. There's four ways these forces all work together. We already discovered one. That is the force of gravity pulling our plane down. The second force, which we've already discussed, is the force of our wings. So gravity pulls our plane down, where lift generated by our wings pulls the plane up. The next force is the thrust, or the amount of power we put behind our plane. So that thrust force pushes our plane forward, and the last force is drag. Drag pulls the plane down until it eventually settles, and drag comes from the air molecules all around us, causing friction and slowing our plane down until it lands. So there's four forces. We have gravity pulling down, lift pushing up, thrust pushing us forward, and drag pulling us back. 
Those four forces will impact your plane and the way you design your plane will let you use those forces to make your best plane even better. All right, let's do this. Last time, we built a pretty basic plane model. It's time to improve our design. One of the things you might have noticed in, the, in your testing is that the wings on this plane are meant for high speed maneuverability. Remember that fighter jet we looked at? So we want to try a different design that has the wings built more for slightly slower speeds because most of our arms aren't as strong as a fighter jet. To make this plane, let's check out this guy here. If we compare the wings, do you see how one is more angular, long and sloping, where this one is a little wider and a bit of a better glider? Also, this plane has a little bit more structure or weight in the front. Where this plane, the weight is spread out over the longer fuselage. So today, we're gonna try and build this awesome glider. Check it out. Here we go. Time to build. Step one, we need our paper, just like last time. And just like last time, remember, we're making sure that our plane stays balanced so that our lines of symmetry remain constant and our plane is well constructed. Step one, we need to find the middle of our paper. To do that, we're gonna grab that top corner, I'm gonna bring it across and line up these corners so they line up together. Line up, line up, line up. Nice, remember, we wanna to attend to precision. The more detailed and accurate each of our folds is, the better our plane will be in the long run. Once my corners are lined up, I can come over here to the outside edge and I can crease, crease, crease. Awesome, if you recall, we called this a hot dog fold. Now, let's open our plane up. Oh. We wanna grab the top right corner, just like our first plane, and we're gonna fold this down into a triangle. For those who remember, this triangle is bum, 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 a right triangle because the corner here is a 90 degree angle, which makes the entire triangle, one, two, three sides, a right triangle. However, this line of symmetry down the middle is not balanced until we make another right triangle on the other side. So let's do it. Grab our left side, fold this triangle down. So I'm gonna bring this corner and this line right to our middle line of symmetry. Line that up. Crease, crease, crease. Awesome. So now we have our two right triangles. This is where it starts to get a little different from our first plane build. For this next step, we wanna grab the point here. We're gonna pull this down and I'm lining up this point with the seam that we made in step one. Making sure that everything stays in line and I'm looking at this outside edge here where this little point from this tip of the triangle to the edge there is about one centimeter or about one pinky width, finger width wide. It looks to be about perfect right there. All right, once we have our tip lined up and we have about one centimeter or so there, we can crease this side right here. Perfect. All right, once we've creased here, now it's time for another right triangle. To do this next right triangle, we're gonna grab the corner up here, bring it into the middle. So this top seam here should line up perfectly with our middle line of symmetry. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Gives it a nice good crease. Okay, so now we need to make sure it stays symmetrical. So the other side as well. Fold that in. Crease, crease, crease. Excellent. Now, we wanna open our plane up. You should see a diamond shape right here in the middle. And we have two more triangles on the outside. So there's a triangle over here. One, two, three. And a triangle over here. One, two, three. I'm gonna go to the right triangle first. This folds a little different. I'm gonna grab the corner here and I'm gonna fold it down so this corner lines up along this line right here. I'm gonna make sure that lines up and then I'm gonna bring it back and crease the paper just like this. Excellent. 
Now, if I look at this paper here, you can see I have another 90 degree angle. So even though these sides are very different lengths than our first right triangle, it's still a right triangle. So I have one right triangle on this side. It's time to come over to the other side and make sure they're symmetrical. So I'm grabbing my outside corner, gonna fold that in, bringing this corner to that line, lining everything up, looks good. Crease, 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 excellent. So now that we've creased our corners here, we're gonna fold the plane in and it should look perfect. But now we have two obtuse triangles right here. Remember, obtuse is greater than 90. This next step is a little tricky. So I'm gonna bring this point right here, the tip of our plane, to the middle where this uh, point where the two lines meet. So I'm gonna fold that down. It helps to kind of curl your paper a little bit, so it's flexible. Line everything up. And now we're gonna crease this top fold right here. Now this fold is gonna be starting to get a little bit tough. So if you need help, find an adult nearby and ask them for these next few steps. One of the advantages though, to having this front so tough is that if you've noticed from your first plane, that nose will often crash into things and get all bent out of shape. Having a stronger nose can really help. Now that I have my fold done here, I'm gonna unfold it. And this part, I'm gonna flip the plane over. I wanna really make this crease strong, so I'm folding it back on itself, lining up the nose with that line of symmetry. Crease, 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 nice and folded. Okay, so I went forward and backward, and now I'm looking at my plane this way. Our next step is to kind of fold the plane in on itself. And it's really important when we do this step that we fold the flaps of the plane to the outside. So when I fold it, I'm folding the flaps on the outside. So as I fold you, I should be able to see my flaps are dangling right there. Once those flaps are on the outside, we're gonna look really closely at that triangle we just made. So we have this triangle right here, and it's time for us to fold it another way. So I'm holding the plane so it's perpendicular to where I am sitting or standing. And we're gonna fold this front part to crease this triangle in half, just like that. Perfect. So let me show you that one more time. So I'm gonna grab our triangle. I'm gonna fold this tip down to match this piece right there. So that now the tip of my plane should be this little triangle like so. Folding and matching. Awesome. Once you have that done, this is the last part that gets to be a little complicated. You wanna grab your plane. I think it works best if you grab it with like your uh, middle and ring fingers and even your pinky. And you wanna open up the top that you just created, just like so. Once you open it up, you can use your thumbs to kind of fold that part in. And all of those creases that we've done before should really be helping out right now because the paper should want to fold where it had folded before. And you're looking for something that looks a little bit like a diamond, right up the middle or two triangles on either side. So I'm gonna show that one more time. So here's our plane, folded tip. I'm gonna use my fingers to hold the plane. I'm opening it up, using my pointer fingers and thumb to kind of push it together until I get a bit of a diamond or two triangles in the front. Once I have that part, I'm gonna grab the top of the diamond and fold it down so that it now takes that diamond and folds it in half this way so that I have one more triangle facing down. I know, this is a complicated fold, but it's a really cool plane and it should fly really well for you. Once we have that part down, you should have a little, uh, it looks like a triangle right here in the front. And if you look at it from the side, it kind of looks like a bird, doesn't it? Kind of cool. All right, last fold for the nose of the plane. Once you have that triangle folded in front, we can fold both sides of the flaps down. So we're folding, folding, folding. And we should have this nice crease in the front and our flaps are folded down. Whew. Now, from this tip of the triangle, kind of extending out this way, I want you to imagine a line that we can fold these wings down. So I'm gonna grab our wing and I'm folding it down. I'm gonna match the back of the plane to the back of the, uh, the fuselage. 
to make sure I have a very nice perpendicular fold. Creasing everything, crease, crease, crease. Awesome sauce. Once you have one side done, flip the plane over. Let's try the other side. Grab here, fold it down. Fold, fold, fold. Sweet. Okay. So now we have our plane folded in half. Final two steps. On each of the wings, we want to fold up just a little bit. That folding up will create what's called a winglet. I don't know, it's a fun word. Winglet. It's like piglet, but for your wing. Cute and small, but still important. All right, here we go. And our next one, folding this up, making another winglet. Whew. And now we are ready to fluff and have a look at this new glider we just made. Sweet! The cool thing with this glider is a few details that I like about it a lot. One is the nose is much stronger. I'm sure if you've been throwing your airplane as hard as I throw mine, your noses or the cockpit of their plane is getting smushed and smushed and smushed. This is a lot stronger. Also, because of all the folds and all of the wing reinforcement, it's got a higher structural integrity. Yeah, that's a complicated word. Having a higher structural integrity means that your plane can support more thrust or you can throw it harder without the wings flopping over or falling apart. Also, this plane, because the front is held together more tightly, seems to perform better than this plane where the fuselage is more open. That's been my experience. Lastly, these winglets also help act as a rudder to guide the plane where you want it to go. Excellent. So now that we've finished our glider, a few challenges to make it even better. One challenge could be to try and train your glider to do loops. One way to do that would be to fold your elevators, remember those flaps in the back of the plane, and pick them up more. If you wanna make a really advanced elevator, you can put a small tear in your plane like this, and that becomes a tiny little flap that you can have kind of coming back here to catch that air and make your plane go forward and loop back and come at you again. Another challenge, oh, let me grab this guy here. Perfect. Another challenge with this glider is to see if you can break the record you had already made with your first plane. After you take a crack at our challenge, we would love to have you connect with us to share the photos and videos you get of your plane soaring to new heights. Connect with us on Instagram or Facebook or post your photos and videos to Seesaw and I will write back to you. All right, friends. I hope you enjoyed today's Tech Lab Online. If you like this and want to learn more, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to be the first for our next challenge coming up, please ring that bell. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you can design to make your best plane even better. Until next time, friends, keep soaring.